How's it going everyone? My name is Dylan Abernathy and uh, what I want to do here is just quickly release on my Gumroad a, a small smart material for Substance Painter along with this quick tutorial as to how to make um, some really quick and easy and good looking uh, stickers that you can add to your meshes inside of Substance Painter. I uh, ended up throwing this together because I realized my last couple of props here, um, this Ava elevator, the experience points cassette player and the typewriter all had stickers on them and I ended up using a really really similar workflow for all three of them. Um, so what I decided to do was just for myself actually make a smart material, a sticker creator smart material. Um, and since I already had it made and I mean it's it's just sort of sitting around for me, I thought I'd put it on my Gumroad for free and uh, quickly explain exactly how you guys can use it as well. This is just a quick demo. And I'm going to go exactly over how I got uh, this right here. And it only takes a couple of minutes. It's really quick and easy. Um, I'm sure there are other sticker generators or, or things like that out there that probably use anchor points and, and set things up a million times easier. But uh, this is super simplistic to the point where anybody is going to know how to use this. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd just quickly go over that with you guys. So let's go ahead and delete this and start from scratch. I can even turn this guy off for now. And... Um, yeah, we're going to be starting off in our modeling package of choice. You could be using Max or Maya or Blender or anything like that. But essentially, we just want to sort of have our model in a place where we can extract our UV layout. So if you're in Maya, all you have to do is go to your UV editor, click this little camera and export um, your UV layout, put it wherever you want. Um, one thing I always prefer to do is make it a PNG. This way it has transparency and it's just a little bit easier to work with. Um, but go ahead and do that once you have your final model. And this is important just because we need to sort of know where we're putting our sticker. It's all based on masks. And uh, let's go inside of Photoshop to check out exactly how we can do that. So I just have a black background because we're going to be, like I said, using masks. And black is just going to mean uh, no sticker there, essentially. And we have our UV guide to explain exactly where we're going to be putting the, the sticker that we want. So I'm going to quickly find a uh, logo or something that we can use. I'm going to use this channel logo I have um, for my YouTube channel. And essentially all we have to do is just position it in a spot where we'd want it to show up on our 3D model. Uh, for me, I'm just going to put it on, on one of the sides here that's facing the front of the camera and then tilt it maybe a little bit. Give it a bit like of a, an off-centered tilted look as if someone just slapped it on somewhere. Um, because one of the, the things you have to keep in mind is like, we still have to sort of make this how we want it to appear. We're not going to be manipulating the actual layout of it inside of uh, substance painter. So this is going to be determining where it actually shows up. So let's just quickly put that somewhere like so. Um, also, also one thing you notice with a lot of stickers is they sort of have like a white border around them. Um, for example, something like this that has a line in it couldn't really be a sticker. Uh, you'd have to have something that sort of attaches this. So one quick way to really um, get that going is just to quickly add a stroke. So went down to the effects button, add stroke. It's going to make that white and uh, buff up the size of it a little bit to something more sticker like. Um, and then I'm just going to adjust the color a little bit just because nothing is ever pure white, right? So I'm going to make this slightly off white, a little darker, a little yellowed, um, nothing too crazy. And essentially that's our, one of our sticker, um, uh, image files already. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off these UV guides. I'm going to go to file, save as. And I already have sticker albedo set up here. So I'm just going to hit save. Uh, you guys can save it out as your own PSD. Um, now we need an actual mask for this, which is going to be really easy to generate. I'm just going to end up duplicating this. Uh, it has effects on it, so I'm going to want to collapse that. So I'm just going to merge it with a, a blank layer by hitting Control Shift E. And um, let's see, Control E, sorry. And then all we have to do is Control U for hue and saturation, bump this up to 100% white, and now we have a mask for that. So file, save as, sticker mask. Okay, perfect. 
So now inside of Substance Painter, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and import those. I already have mine here, but I'll just reload them for the sake of um, having those new ones here. And the smart material is called Sticker Creator. So this is what you'd have to drag inside of Substance Painter. So let me just show you exactly what you would do. If you were installing this, you would just grab this, drag it in, and uh, I already have it installed, but it would ask you what you want it to be. Just make sure it's set to Smart Material and you're good to go. Um, so let's go ahead and drag in a fresh one of these. Uh, as you can see, it's looking nothing like a sticker right now, but that's just because we have to actually tell it uh, where we're masking things and what we want it to look like. So let's go back to our project. This is going to be all of the project specific uh, things we either generated or imported inside of Substance Painter. Uh, and let's actually take a look at what we're working with here. So the first thing I'd recommend doing is just sort of like quickly looking over all of the different sort of masks and stuff. We're going to have to fill in some of this stuff ourselves and then the rest is going to be taken care of already from things that I've set up. So for example, sticker mask in the actual group is going to be the first thing we're going to have to set up and that's just going to be our sticker mask. And uh, as you can see, all that's doing is just sort of putting some confinement exactly on where our sticker can be and all the information so that's really good it means that if we erase things and then want to fill it back in we're never going to spill over the edges which is a uh, super super nice to have that all contained um, next down we have sticker foil this is going to be how we get that shiny uh hollow foil look but um we're going to save that for the very end uh the first thing we really want to do is the sticker design itself so if we go to the actual um fill layer here we're going to just want to drag in our actual color to the base color and as you can see we already have a sticker here it's raised up a little bit it has some surface information uh, you can go ahead and affect the the roughness and stuff like that if you want to change it up i think most stickers have a nice subtle shine to them there's also an optional grunge here so what this is doing is adding um just a little bit of of coloration to it it's also adding a little bit of roughness if we check that out, very, very subtle. Um, but feel free to mess around with that. In fact, I, I really encourage that you sort of go through these and, and change them up. The scale is gonna change quite a bit depending on how big the, the stuff you're working on is. Like for example, if I was using this uh, for here, I'd have to readjust all of the scales because this sticker on the UV sheet is, is pretty huge, all things considered. Um, so there's that. And then paper and glue. We don't need to mess with any any um, custom imports for these because they're relying on the sticker mask that we have here. So let's go over exactly how we get this to look a little bit more interesting, a little bit more realistic. If we go over to the actual mask, there's gonna be a, a paint layer called Remove Edges. So let's go ahead and uh, find a brush that would sort of match this pretty well. The one that I typically start off with trying is uh, the mold brush. And as long as we have it set to black and we're going to remove edges, we can kind of paint out some, some of that sticker as if it's been sort of shredded a little bit. So mold is a good one. So you can sort of go back and forth between adding and removing to really get a, a solid look. So anywhere there's going to be these tips or anything super exposed to the, the edge, you might want to just sort of chip a little bit away if you're going for more of a a weathered look and maybe even on this really big wide uh, rounded area so we'll start with that for now um, the same exact thing we're going to be doing for the paper layer so the paper layer just to quickly go over it um, you can just change the color and the roughness and all of that i also have paper texture set up here which is just giving it more of this like um, papery well, texture, I guess it's more of like a furry texture. I'm sure you've you've ripped a label off and you have some of it staying behind and you have this sort of like almost furry like paper texture there. So I'm just sort of emulating that, um, but feel free to change all that. And once again, the scale is something you'll probably have to update, um, but we can also just go ahead to the remove edges. And just like the last one, we can paint out some of that paper. And I think the ideal look is to just have it kind of over over the edges of where the actual rip is just by a little bit. And underneath that is, is a, a sort of glueish layer, um, which we're gonna be adjusting a little bit in a second. But you can see it's, it's kind of nice to have 
multiple layers here set up and you can tell that some of it is sticking on, some of it is ripping off and you can get as detailed as you want with it. But essentially that's a really, really quick way to set that up. I'm just gonna do a much larger area so it's a bit more visible to see. And I'll probably just end up doing it right here. So let's remove a bit more of the actual sticker. The mold brush is great, but I think sometimes um, it's a little bit too particle-y for my liking, so you might want to have to paint some of it back in. Continue it down a little bit. So experiment with uh, which brushes you like the most for this kind of stuff. Um, for example, I think, yeah, Artistic Heavy Sponge is another one that I end up using quite a bit. It's just a bit more solid, very similar, like sporadic look, but you're not going to get any of those like almost, you know, half opaque um, missing parts, which wouldn't really be the most realistic thing. Uh, this has obviously gone a little overboard, so I'm going to tone it back in. And then maybe just a little bit more here to continue it over a bit. And then we well, might, why not? We can just do it up here as well. So we can go back to our paper layer, back to the remove edges. Sort of follow that. It can be as rough as you want. You can have some areas where there's just a lot more paper, like over here maybe, just fill it in quite a bit more. Like it was just a very unclean rip. I think near the edges, it kind of makes more sense for that. Okay. And then if you wanted to, you could go ahead and I might even brighten this up a little bit. Something like that. Um, so you can spend as much time as you want sort of adjusting that. And then the final bottom layer here is glue. So the glue is essentially, um, obviously the glue at the bottom of the sticker, even when you peel it off, it's going to be remaining there and just be the sort of rough grayish bluish, uh, paste that's going to be sticking around. Um, one thing I like to do with this is you can obviously like cut it out as much as you want and sort of do a similar treatment like that but I find that's not exactly how this would work. So I just kind of lower the stroke opacity and just around the edges, like fade it a little bit. I think that's sort of the, the best look for this. You still want it to be there, but like if it was raining or weathered, um, the edges would, would subtly go away. And the nice thing about this is since it's contained by the, the actual folder, I could bring this back up just paint it back in. I'm not gonna to I'm not gonna spill over or anything like that. So let's just press X to go back and forth between adding and removing and just sort of lower the opacity to see exactly what we want to go for here. Let's just have it subtly fading off at the edges. Nothing too crazy though. I like the glue, like having that imprint of the whole thing and what it should ideally look like. I think that's uh, more or less how it would turn out in real life, right? Occasionally though, you might wanna fade it out a little bit more. Like I don't mind on these spots cause you kind of know what it's supposed to look like. And just maybe a little bit, just to break the silhouette of it but be, be pretty sparing with this. I don't want to go too overboard. Cause even here, I feel like it's getting to be uh, a little bit much. Fill that in a bit more. Up here. And yeah, we're getting a pretty nice sort of weathered sticker look here. Um, the glue itself, I guess I didn't talk about too much, is yeah, just sort of a bluish gray color. And then there's some variation in the roughness you can affect. And then also there's variation in the opacity. If you want it to be a bit stronger, just go ahead and turn that off. But I think it gives it a nice sort of weathered uh, textured look. Even if you remove the sticker, it would probably have some of that uh, 
variation of some of it being stuck on the sticker when it's removed and some of it staying on the surface. Um, so that leaves us with only one part left, which is the sticker foil. So let's go ahead and see uh, what needs to happen for this. So typically when, when you have a sticker, um, it's not always completely covered in a foil. It's usually just one specific spot. So we're going to have to make a third and final um, mask for this. And this can be really quick and easy. So in the example that I showed at the start, I just wanted the blue to sort of have this reflective foil option. So all I'm going to do is use the magic wand. Um, which you can find up here, or just press W, and uh, I'm just going to select the blue that I want for, for this foil. Uh, hit Control J when it's selected. Um, looks like we still have the outline on, so we can turn that guy off. But then once again, Control U, turn the brightness up, and there's the mask for just the blue spot. So we can go ahead and save as uh, foil, sticker foil. And then you guys would drag that into Substance Painter. But for me, I'm just going to go ahead and re-import, reload it. And then we would turn this on. It's very sporadic and random, but that's just because in the um, mask, we just have to go down to where it says mask, sticker foil. Now it's only going to be affecting the blue because that's what we're telling it to do. And we can sort of adjust it. Um, it's kind of cool. We have a, a fill for the mask. We have a fill for the pattern and then a layer for cleanup. So let's just sort of experiment with the pattern. Uh, I find if you go into um, where you can import a mask and type in pattern, there's already quite a few. You can go ahead and make your own. Um, there's some really cool looking ones here that are already built in. So like if you wanted to, for example, have polka dots, turn the scale way up on this, it can affect how big they are, um, affect the tiling of it. And it's pretty creative. Like there's uh, a decent amount here, but like I said, you could always go in Google Images or Substance Designer, or um, there's a plethora of resources for, for tiling patterns like this. Uh, this diamond one is also kind of cool, circles and diamonds. If you scale them super close up, you kind of get a lot of these fract uh, fractured looks. Um, and I would just encourage just experimenting with some of these. Um, my favorite one so far has just been Checkers 2, so it kind of gives it like this pixely um, video game -y aesthetic, which I kind of like. One thing to keep in mind is if your sticker is rotated, you're going to have to sort of rotate to match that. But I'm just going to lower the scale even more. Histogram position to see how much you want. This is just working off of metallic and roughness to give it this look. Um, scale it up a little bit more. And the one thing to note is there's a mask cleanup section here. You're just going to have to go through making sure your stroke capacity is on 100% and uh, just sort of clean up these edges since you've um, added sort of a, a custom look to to these edges here it's not going to completely follow the uh the mask of the sticker it's going to spill over into some of those areas and obviously we don't want it to to be on the paper or the glue areas so really quickly to do that that's why i mentioned at the start there's probably somebody out there who's made something similar with with anchor points or all that but this is just about as as simple as it gets and anyone can sort of pick this up right away um so yeah, I can go ahead and mess with that. The sticker foil itself is uh, also pretty customizable. You can give it color, make it look however you want. I think in the example that I showed at the start, I had more of a an orangey look to it. Can affect the roughness of it. Obviously, it's supposed to be kind of like a, almost a metallic foil, so I'd keep it relatively low roughness, high on the metallic value. Crank up the color. Um, and you can mess around with it as much as you want. I think this is kind of the most fun part. Obviously not every sticker is going to have this, but uh, yeah, you can play with this as much as you want and uh, kind of go crazy with it. So yeah, let's go ahead and leave it, leave it at that for now. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the smart material uh, that I've gone ahead and made. As you can see when it's over a texture, it's really nice to sort of have that glue. Um, with this one in particular, I would probably go ahead and remove even more of this papered look. I'd want it to be pretty subtle. 
Um, I think right now it's kind of overpowering. Um, get that to sort of fall off a little bit more. Like I said, maybe build up in some of the corners. But this is nice because you can also paint it back in some areas. Sort of erase some of it. And obviously just add more and more detail. So I think that's gonna do it for this. Uh, just a really, really quick tutorial. Uh, nothing too crazy, but um, like I said, I've been using stickers a lot and a lot of my um, props. So I really wanted to just quickly throw something together and hopefully you guys uh, can get some good use out of this as well. Super, super simple. Um, but whenever I do this kind of stuff, I definitely wanna to pass it along. So let me guys know if you end up using this. Um, shoot me a tweet or uh, an email or anything like that. I'm always down to check out the stuff you guys are working on. Um, but with that out of the way, there isn't too much to talk about this. Super simple, like I said. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you find some good use out of it. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you checking out my stuff. So once again, my name is Dylan Abernathy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and uh, I'll catch you in the next video tutorial resource post, whatever it is. All right, have a great day, everyone.